What a great night. Thanks for the hospitality. So, um, I guess chronologically, if we were to look at this, um, Treason uh, started probably uh, working with Alan White uh, on the very first Treason record, and that was 96. I think Alan recorded Bus Stop Door uh, here at Water Street. Um, that would have been Carl Howe on guitar, uh, myself on uh, keyboards, uh, Alan on drums uh, on that track. Uh, that band also had Pete Stern, who was the Treason drummer and Jim Dixon uh, was the treason bass player. Uh, I also did backup vocals. So that was the very first uh, interaction of that. Um, vocals uh, in that in incarnation was Brian Mikulski. Um, and Billy Sherwood uh, mixed uh, the very first self-titled treason record uh, in LA. Brian and I produced that one, and we went down uh, to LA to Billy's studio in Van Nuys at the time. Um, he called it The Office. Um, and we uh, were down there and uh, I'm mixing it for a month or something like that. I think the next uh, interaction, and of course I knew Steve, uh, Steve and I worked at Microsoft together, um, and uh, Steve was out playing with Merkaba and I would go and uh, see some of the shows, um, and that's how I first saw Kevin. Um, and uh, that, that, that was a completely different version of uh, Merkava. That was uh, with ditch players and flute players and um, a rotating drummer of the month, I believe. Um, so it was uh, kind of a tribe is the best way I, I saw it anyways. That's what, the way I would interpret it. Um, and uh, they recorded their self-titled uh, album. Um, and for uh, the track, I'm gonna let Kevin pronounce it, uh, for the track that they uh, recorded here, uh, Alan had, I believe Alan had already been here, um, recorded Bus Stop Door, so he had been in the studio. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if it was Alan that suggested uh, that you guys record here or not, but you came here and recorded... Aloria Male. Yeah, Aloria Male was recorded over here, uh, and I think it did, you know. It was relative because uh, Alan lives over here on this side of the sound, um, and and he had recorded with Treason. And so Alana and Wayo Hogan uh, came over and this was, uh, this was a song that Wayo Hogan had written, Aloria Molly. And uh, yeah, that, that put Alan on the first Merkava CD release was Aloria Molly. And of course, Steve was friends with Alan at that time. I first met Alan at a bar where Merkaba was playing. And then, uh, as Ted had mentioned, we did the core of Merkaba was uh, Richard Wayo Hogan, uh, guitar, vocal, songwriter, Alana Cheney, who he was married to, was didgeridoo. It was Jatan on flute. It was Steve Boyce on bass and vocals. And then it was me uh, on vocals and on the front. So. Basically, I played Shaker and things like that. And we brought in uh, a percussionist. Uh, sometimes we would use a drummer with a trap set. We, we were also known to play live with just percussion, um, a variety of things. We utilized one, two, three, four. Four different percussionist drummers on the Merkava CD. Wow. Um, uh, which was good, uh, and Alan is on that track, Olora Male. That that CD came out in 99, 2000. Mm, okay. um, I think it, that was the time when, uh, and that's just me. I'm not particular with times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just who I am. Uh, you know, the general idea of what was going on at that time. 
and it was in there. I, I think it was 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. And then, it, then Alan started stepping in whenever he was around, and he would actually play Merkaba shows. Um, and we started doing that. And then, of course, what happened was, at that time, uh, Wayo Hogan and Alana, uh, their marriage, uh, they broke up. Alana moved to Hawaii, and that was around 2001 or two, I, I think. I'm, I'm not real on what that time was. At that point was when Merkaba was at first moving on with just Chiton and we had no didgeridoo. Uh, and then we started adding, we added an extra player, uh, Rick Jackson, God rest his soul. Um, uh, started, came in as a second keyboardist. Uh, Richard Wayo Hogan, he would play guitar and keyboards. I was playing a little bit of keyboard on some songs. Uh, back then also. And then at that time we were doing more shows and Alan was playing more uh, with us. And uh, that was that point where we brought, where Ted, Ted started coming into the mix and Ted had mentioned before, uh, we had some tracks that we had done. Uh, Steve sent them over. Ted did some work on it. And then the talk came, well, hey, Ted, want to come over? And we got some gigs. You want to sit in? And then Ted Ted became the keyboard player, briefly, in the Merkaba. And that's, as I had said previously. And then it transitioned into, Ted and I started, uh, Ted had this, this music and these things, and we started working more. And things were kind of growing a little bit out of that. Uh, I think there was a bit of a fire there between Ted and I um, as far as songwriting, which went into a lot of the songs that are on the, the white CD, yeah. you know, are, are actually from that. And uh, yeah, then it, then it went into white. Now, now it's kind of transitioned through this release. Well, these, this, you know? this, these are these re releases which are oddly um, where you're seeing the prequel, I guess, after the, uh, after the feature. Um, you know, in terms of the, of the Yes involvement, as I, uh, I think I mentioned in another clip, um, Alan and I had met each other at Microsoft in the 90s, and it was Mike Tiano who, who brought uh, Alan and I together. Um, and then Alan and I independently uh, enjoyed uh, telling stories over beers. He would tell me um, stories of, of Yes and uh, shenanigans on the road, and um, I would tell him about the goings on and shenanigans of Microsoft, and um, we enjoyed each other's company a lot, laughed a lot, uh, and the beer was always good. Um, from there, you know, Alan started uh, uh, making available the opportunity to go out uh, and, and travel with him on the road. Um, so I would go out, and I, I met Billy Sherwood, and this was uh, originally it was the talk time. So the very first shows that I went out to were out uh, at the Gorge um, when they did talk and uh, so uh, during that time and, and I, this is no real uh, secret yes I always had uh, internal alliances and politics that's pretty much ubiquitous that you'll find in, in any band it's uh, I believe it's just human nature um, in the case of white uh, Kevin and I um, were very much aligned because we worked so well together we created things uh, together and we we did and still really do enjoy each other's company uh, quite a bit. Um, so in that particular case, there was that was Kevin and I. Um, so you know, during the the, the talk time, uh, the block was uh, Billy Sherwood, uh, Alan White, and Chris Squire, um, and they were the the group that I hung out a fair bit with. So I got to know Chris quite well. Um, I got to know Alan, of course, uh, very very well, um, and of course I got to know Billy really well. Um, I had a huge affinity with Billy Sherwood. I still do. Um, Billy is a straight shooter, a straight talker, uh, no bullshit. Um, that's very much me. Um, so he and I have always gotten along great, and that's why he ended up mixing the record. And my friendship, trust, uh, respect, uh, and admiration for Billy Sherwood continues to this day because he's such a straight shooter. Um, I can't say enough great about Billy Sherwood. Um, really great guy. Um, but I would often go out with, with Alan on tour because it was an amazing education for me. It was a lot of fun. 
Um, and uh, there was always some ideas that came up. Um, you know, one of the things that happened during the Open Your Eyes tour, Steve Boyce was also uh, on that tour uh, with Alan and I. Um, Steve and I uh, put together a bunch of um, the high technology at the time, mini disc recorders, uh, throughout the stage and in the audience, and we did record, I think it was the last show of the Open Your Eyes tour with Igor Koroshev on keyboards, Billy Sherwood on guitar, Steve Howe on guitar, Chris Squire on bass, Alan White on drums, and John Anderson singing. Um, I still have that recording and I've listened to it recently. Uh, fantastic. Um, so we would do things like that uh, on, on tour with Alan. Um, of course, we had a lot of fun. We would see how things worked. Uh, I got a first-hand view of the politics. I got to know Bob Quant, who was a tour manager, um, and understand the finances behind it. For me, it was a real in-depth education on the socio-political aspects of it, the financial aspects of it, the logistics of it, how the heck do you move from country to country, deal with jet lag, and deal with the grueling schedule that a band at Yes's level has to deal with. You know, over time, uh, having met with Alan, I've you know spent time and got to know virtually all of the keyboard players. Tony Kay uh, was and is a great friend of mine. Um, I know Rick enough to say hello, uh, send him an email. Um, Jeff Downs uh, became friends because of his uh, involvement in White after I left. Um, but Jeff and I have had beers in uh, Japan before. We've met uh, in God, Milwaukee before and, and hung out. Jeff is just a wonderful guy in addition to a great player. Um, Igor Koroshev, uh, I got along with great. Um, I know he's somewhat of a controversial figure in Yes, but he is a great player. Um, and my experience with Igor was nothing short of fun, hilarity, and great playing. Um, Igor did play on tracks that sadly never made it on the Second Treason record spinning. Uh, along with Alan White, those tracks actually didn't make it. Um, but nonetheless, wonderful to work with these guys. Totally professional, really brought a lot to, 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 to bear. Um, so, interesting uh, being exposed to the world of Yes, which is all, of course, thanks to Alan White. Um, and it was a wonderful education for me. Um, in terms of production, uh, I got to see, um, when they did the Keys to Ascension live recordings, that Billy Sherwood and... Um, Fletch um, did the production and I actually got to see how they put together a live record for multi-tracks and deal with all the issues of phasing and multiple mics on stage. They're all techniques that I used um, when Kevin and I put together uh, White songs. Um, so all that stuff was really uh, Alan's uh, welcoming me into the Yes family and it's really how uh, we got to know each other. Anyways, um, that's kind of how uh, Yes uh, fit in with, with me, how Kevin and I were together, and, and Kevin's experience, of course, he was uh, at, at the, the Yes shows as well, because Alan uh, was very gracious in bringing the people that he played with in his musical community here into his world so that they would get the exposure, experience, and, and wisdom of really what it took to, to take uh, your music, your career, your level of performance, to that of yes. Um, and that's really what, uh, what kind of brought all this together. That was really the, the mixing of Treason, of Merkaba, and of yes. Yeah, and, and I'd have to agree. It, it, things kind of formulated, and, and as they were, it was basically like it was just unfolding as, as connections would come together, as... We would start having things happen, and then new ideas would come out of that. And then there was this formulation that was beginning, and then the white did. Then there, then there was Alan White, and then here was this white. <clears throat> that came out, that was kind of like an explosion. Because uh, we're at the time of where now it was turning out, it was really kind of looking indirectly, right or wrong. There was no ego involved with it. Uh, and I could speak totally for myself, but... It was appearing like we were creating these songs and we were going to do a white record um, with Alan White and, and a lot of the fire of the material was starting to come out of what Ted and I were doing, uh, which was fine because it was, it was basically that whole loyal CD uh, was predominantly 
there, there's a great track on there that Carl wrote. Uh, there's a great track of Steve's Mighty Love on there. A, a great song wow, with a, a kind of a Rasta reggae influence. Yeah. You know, um, but basically, you know, the whole inception, I'd have to say, and once again, you know, it wasn't driven out of ego. Um, because if anybody knows me especially, that's, uh, that's not my directive. I Totally, we're all equal on this planet with expression. And I've always considered, you know, the, the idea of members coming together. That's always what's fired me up is, you know, the meetings of these spirits and playing music together and what we create. That's what I like. Not so much the, I'm not much of a solo type of individual. Myself, but uh, you do have a good shaker, so <clears throat> a great shaker, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, and then, and then, uh, Come shout.